Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains what, 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 178. Please turn to it. Page number 178. The very first problem that you see there in the second column, number 185. Number 185, we are told that V1 80% of the first 100 games. 80% of the first 100 games were won. We are further told that we also won 50% of the remaining games that we played. We also know that overall winning was 70%. We won overall 70% of all the games. The question simply is how many games how many games were played? Let's find out, shall we? Let's pick 10 that the number of games that we played is n. Well, I, should, let's, uh, I, should, I didn't mean to say let's pretend. Let's represent that with the letter n. So here's our equation. 80% of the first 100. 80% of the first 100 is 80. Plus, if n is the total number of the games, if n is the total number of the game, then we won 50% of the remaining. Remaining would be the total number of games that we played, which is n, minus the first 100. These are the remaining number of games. n minus 100. And we, we are told that we won 50% of these. And as a result, our overall winning was 70% of the total number of games that we played. Again, which is n. That's very good. There's our equation. Pretty straightforward, simple linear equation. We just have to solve for n. So let's do it. So we get 80 plus 0.5n, 0.5 times n, and then half of 100 is 50, and here we have 0.7n. Here we have 5n, here we have 0.7n. If we subtract 0.5n from both sides, we get 80 minus 50, we get 30 equals to 30 equals to 0.2n which in turn implies that 0.1n equals 15 and if 0.1n equals 15 then n would be 10 times as much and therefore n equals 150. That's all there is. And if you like, if you wish, we could actually quickly verify this thing. We could very quickly verify this thing. We know that we have won, we are told that we won 70% of all the games. 70% of 150 70% of 150 is simply, well, 70%, 70 of 100 is 70, and 70% 70 of 50 would be 35. So if 100, 105 total games were won, 105 total games were won, which happens to be equal to, which happens to be equal to the first 80 games that we won out of first 100, plus 50% of the remaining 50 game because total is 150 games so 50% of the remaining 50 50% 50 of remaining 50 is 25 plus 80 for a total of 105 games we won 105 games out of a total of 150 games the first 100 games we did very well we won 80% of those 80 out of 100 and uh, of the remaining 50 we have won only half of them, which is 25, so it comes out to be 105, which is exactly what 70% of 150 is. 
Let's go to the next one, number 186. Number 186. In number 186, we are told that we have a total of 30 applicants. We have a total of 30 applicants, we are told, out of which 14 of them have experience, we are told. We are told that 18 of them have degrees. And we are further told that 3 have neither. Three of these Three of these 30 applicants who showed up for the interview had neither the experience nor a college degree. Let's see what this adds up to. 14 plus, 14 plus 18, that's 2, carry 1, then we get 32. But if 3 of them had neither, 3 of them that had neither, 30 minus 3 is 27. This is 32. This implies, this is, this is 5 more. This is, this is 5. This is 5 more than 27. 30 minus 3 is 27. This implies that 5 are double counted. 5 are double counted. And the question simply was, how many of them have both? These 5 people who are double counted are the people. These 5, 5s five have both. 5 of these 30 people who applied for the job have both a college degree and an experience. And if you like, you could actually show it if you want to do it with the Venn diagram. If you don't like what we just did here, if you want to do the Venn diagram, you could do that too. Here's our experience, here's our degree. We are told that 14 of them have experience. 14 of them have experience. We are told that 18 of them have degree. Again, same exact, same exact work, nothing is going to change. 14 plus 18 is 32. It's supposed to be 27 which tells us that five of them belong to this area. These five people are first counted as people having the experience, and the same five people are again counted again as people who, are, who have the degree. These five are counted twice. And as soon as we insert five in here, we have to go back and adjust these figures. This 14 becomes nine. We have to take away five from there. This 18 becomes 13. So out of the 30 people, 13 of them have, have only the college degree, Eight of them have only the experience. There are five people who have both, and there are three we are told to have neither. Five people. The answer is five have both. Let's go to the next one, number 187. Number 187. In number 187, we have a simple equation, 1 plus 1 over x, we are told, equals 2 minus 2 over x. And we simply have to solve for x. We have to simply solve for x. But the very first thing we're going to do is to somehow get rid of this x from the bottom. How can we get rid of this x from the bottom? By multiplying the entire equation by x. Multiply this side of the equation by x, multiply every term on this side of the equation by x, multiply every term on this side of the equation by x, which is what we're going to do here. Multiply this term by x, this term by x, multiply this term by x, and this by x. And by doing so, I know I don't need to show the baby step, I know I don't need to show the baby step, but otherwise there is nothing in this problem, otherwise uh, I have to do something, you understand? So that's it. This x drops out, 1 times x is just x, and here we have just 1, this x drops out, as I said, plus 1 equals 2 times x is 2x, this x is going to drop out and minus 2. That's all. Bring the x to this side and bring the cost to the other side. So here we have positive x, subtract x from both sides, and here we have negative 2, add 2 to both sides, and there we go. Positive x and negative x is going to drop out. 1 plus 2 is 3 equals 2x minus x is going to be x. And negative 2 and positive 2 are going to drop out. x equals 3. 
x equals 3. That's all there is. That's all there is. And it, it doesn't take that long actually, it does not take that long actually to verify this answer. 1 plus 1 plus a third, 1 plus a third you see is 1 over x and x is 3. So 1 over x would be 1 over 3, 1 plus a third. How many thirds in a 1? 1 has 3 thirds, 1 plus a third is 4 third. And on this side we have 2, 2 minus 2 over x which is 2 third. How many threes in a, how many threes in a 6? 6 has 6 thirds. 2, or rather, uh, 2 has 6 thirds. 2 can be written as 2 can be written as 6 thirds. 6 third minus a 2 third is 4 third. As you can see they are equal. Let's go on then. That was that was too silly, I know that. Number 188. Number 188, the very last problem on the page. We are told that 96 out of 100 million had accidents. Question is how many out of 3 billion? How many out of 3 billion? And in case you're wondering why they go out of their way to explain to you that 1 billion is equal to a thousand million, one thousand million, there's a reason for it, is because unlike the US, in the US one billion is counted as one thousand million, but in most of the other parts of the world, especially in Britain, one billion is equal to one thousand, uh, one, one, one billion equals to one million million, one million million. So in Britain, in Britain, 1 billion is equal to 10 to the 12, which, is, which does not apply to in the US. In the US, 1 billion equals 1,000 million. 1,000 million. This does not apply in the US. And therefore, 1,000 million, which is 10 to the 6, and is 10 to the 9. Anyway, we, we, I, 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 we, need, we, needed to, we needed to realize this thing because that's what we're going to need here. When they say billion, of course, GMAT being a U.S. exam, we have to use the U.S. definition. A billion in the U.S. is a thousand million, not a million million. Let's continue. So that's the rate of accident. One, 100 out of every 100 million cars, 96 of them had accidents. Question is, how, at this rate, how many accidents would we expect to observe if we had 3 billion uh, three billion uh, journeys, I believe, not cars, obviously. Okay? 3 billion journeys. Let's find out. So 96 out of 100 million which is same as 96 times 10 out of 100 times 10 million. Look, I'm going to erase this part. It's, it's confusing everything. We don't need this thing. It looks better this way. So what we did was, we know we have 96 out of 100 million. Therefore, if you multiply this quantity by 10, we have to multiply that quantity by 10. So 96 times 10, 96 times 10 will be the number out of 100 times 10. Now 100 times 10 is 1,000 million, and of course 1,000 million is 1 billion. So this is how many we have out of 1 billion. That implies that we'll have 3 times this amount, 3 times 96 times 10, which is 960, 3 times 960 out of 3 billion, because this was 1 billion, this is 3 billion. If it's 3 billion, it's going to be three times as much. Three times 960. 960 is slightly under 1000, so three times 960 is going to be a little 
less than 3000. I don't know what 960 times 3 is, we're not going to waste our time. The correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly less than 3000. Let's look at the answer choices. Well, answer choice D says 3200. It's not slightly more than 3000, it is slightly less than 3000. The answer is C. The answer is C. Uh, the way you can recognize that the answer is C, well answer is C, let's not make a fuss about it, answer is C. Uh, the thing to realize is that 3 times 6 is 18, and after the 0 we have to have 8, and which is what C says. C says, where does C go? C says 2880. 2880. That's it. Which makes, I'm, I'm keep analyzing it now that we're done, uh, which makes perfect sense because 960 is 40 less than 1000. So 40 less than 1,000 is the difference of 120s. Is this amount is 120 less than 3,000, which is exactly what this is. 120 plus 2,880 would make it 3,000. Anyway, we're done with this page. I'm going to stop right now. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.